Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful afternoon. All systems are full. Fully charged on the sun. Running everything I could possibly need. Or that you could possibly need too. Alright, so let's continue on uh, the beginner uh, solar series. For those of you that have no idea how to do this and you're solar curious and we're going to show you how easy it can be in the opening to this series i was making some analogies like the fuel tank in your vehicle uh, which is what a battery is in your solar system it's just a fuel tank and i made a couple of other analogies that if you just start thinking of it like that it'll it'll all start to fall into place for you in a very easy way just the same as you know how to go fill up your car when it's low on power uh, it's the exact same concepts and once you start living on solar for a little while you'll see just it's just that easy as well so there's our filling station like from the previous video that's what I'm calling the solar panels. They are your filling station for your system. And as you can see with all the shade and this late of afternoon out here, this filling station's about to close for the day. But that's okay because while that filling station was open, meaning the sun hitting those panels all day, my fuel tank is 100% full. I haven't even started working on it and that'll carry me on this system throughout the night for what I have tied up to that. And not only will that fuel tank get me through the night, but it'll last me uh, for several days even under low light conditions where the sun's really not hitting those panels that good. So I've taken all of those things into consideration as well along the way to where I really don't have to think about my system at all. All I really have to do is look at my gauges, see where they're reading, and if I see anything really abnormal, I know exactly what to do. And it's really just as simple as if you're getting too low, you need more power. Just the same as your car. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is uh, what, what can you afford to do? What do you want to do? Uh, what are your plans? So. You want to build a little system, maybe you just want a backup system in case the grid goes down and you want to keep some essentials going like your refrigeration and your freezer, keeping all of your food uh, security in place. And then maybe you'll need something to cook it with in case the grid stays down. So at least a hot plate, you know, and that gets you a long ways through a crisis. If your food stays good, maybe it's air conditioning. I don't know. It will depend where you are, what you want to do. And with the system that we're going to build in this series, you can apply that to any of those scenarios. So let's just imagine that you want to build a system that will keep your uh, cold and frozen food safe during any emergency in case the grid goes down and maybe a way to cook it. Because what good is it if you can't cook it, right? <laughs> so there's some of your security in any emergency. You've got freezer, refrigerator, maybe even have a spare freezer. Or maybe that's all you've got is a spare freezer. Regardless, grid goes down, you want to keep that running. You want to cook it. No problem. So this system here can run all three of those devices no problem whatsoever. I currently don't have it tied up to all three of those, but I easily could. I've got a couple of extra backup systems. I'm distributing my power throughout the house in what's an economical way for me to distribute power. But just to show you guys, got solar panels out there 700 watts this is the fuel line coming in going to the charge controller 
tied into the fuel tank being inverted to regular 120 volt AC exactly like your outlets. Can easily preserve your food, cook your food on one fairly small system. Yeah, so the grid goes down. You just went grocery shopping. You're preparing for everything. You put hundreds of dollars worth of food into your refrigeration and freezing system and the grid goes down. That makes you nervous. With your own little backup supply, you can relax. So you've decided that that's what you want to keep running through any event. But you don't know how much power those devices take. Or this one either. Get yourself one of these, the most simple basic watt meter. Plug it into your outlet, which it is. Plug your device into there. Turn your device on. It will show you exactly how much power that that's taking. You want to make sure you run three devices. Plug it into all three of your devices. See what the device reads and then build accordingly. This little unit is cheap and very effective. It will show you exactly what it runs, what your device runs, power-wise. And then you will know exactly how to build your system accordingly. So for these purposes to show you how easy that is, here's that little oven right here, ready to go. In the standby position, 1.28 watts. That's nothing. Absolutely nothing. We push it on, it's going to go up to 400 degrees, which is a considerable load with a heating element. There we go. It is now on. You're cooking your preserved food so you can eat well tonight. 1,668 watts. I highly recommend before you build your system you take one of these to the devices that you want to power up in any eventuality so you can properly size your system. So there it is, pulling 1600 and whatever, 50, 60 some watts. No problem. Your, your fuel tank has plenty to drive this to make a very good meal. So we're going to call that step number one in this beginner series. Decide what do you want from your solar system initially. Keeping in mind you can always add on, but for your first venture, what do you want to do first? I would highly recommend if you don't know what your devices are drawing, which most of us don't, get you a, a watt meter like I showed you. Uh, there are plenty of them out there. They're very cheap. And you can go around and see, like, oh, I want to run this or that. Uh, plug it in, see what it's doing. And that'll give you a great baseline of where you need to start. So, that's number one in the series. There's going to be a few more coming up that will show you how to build your system accordingly now that you're starting to get the concept what you want, what you want to ask of it, what kind of conditions you expect in your environment, wherever you are, and build accordingly. It's going to be very, very easy. All right, my friends. Aloha, and we'll catch you on the next one.